Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is the block number 9 from the BMW Z4. So pretty much today we're working on the coolant system again. As you guys know from the previous video, I did the coolant flush on the radiator. So pretty much a couple days after that, I noticed a coolant loss on the cooling system. So yeah, so I was telling you guys that I noticed a coolant loss on the cooling system and it ended up that the overflow tank was cracked. So I get the idea that when the car gets warm up, it creates pressure on the coolant system and that pressure would push the coolant out from whatever crack the overflow has. So I don't know if you guys can tell from the camera, but the car is off now. So there is no coolant or anything on the ground. It's pretty dry. This is from yesterday's rain. So pretty much today I'm gonna show you guys how to replace the radiator overflow tank on the BMW Z4. So pretty much over here, I already have the cover out. So to take this cover out, it's pretty simple. The cover is held up by one and two. This is T27 torque bit sockets. And then you have a plastic tab that goes around the frame that holds the cover in place. So pretty much here, I got a brand new part from BMW. I'm gonna put the part number in the description if you guys need to replace this. All right, to start the process, it's pretty simple. All we need is a flathead screwdriver and that's to remove all the safety clip that holds the radiator hoses in place. So here we don't need a diagram. We're just gonna follow the OEM replacement part and to see where we're gonna take out those clips. So pretty much I see one here on top, one here on the middle section and also one on the bottom. To remove this clip, it is pretty simple. You just take your flathead screwdriver and you lift it up on one side and boom easy now we're gonna do that to all of them so it's two on top one on the middle section over there and also here at the bottom we have two of them All right, so pretty much got all the pins out. It was pretty simple. Now the last pin that is on the bottom, you don't need to use the flathead. You're just gonna use the hand. You're gonna pull this forward and uh, it should be out. So pretty much after having all the pins out, it's time to start the process of removing the hoses. So we got one, two, and three. And number four, we have the coolant sensor. All right, so pretty much over here, as you guys can see, I pull it everything out. It ended up a little more complicated than I thought. Uh, I pull out the fan, I pull out the intake box, and then from here, we could just finally access the overflow tank. All right, so pretty much to take out the fans, it is pretty simple. It's held up by two bolts. Uh, both are T25, so it's one on the top here, and also one on the bottom on the corner. And over here, you're gonna find a plastic tab that you need to remove as well. Once you have all that done, you can remove your sensor, your electric plug, and then you can pull the fans out. And also I removed the intake filter box that was held up with two 10 millimeter bolts. All right, so pretty much here, I got the old overflow tank out. It wasn't too bad, just a lot of lack of space, you know, to work on and whatnot, like the fans and the intake box. Now, um, I removed the intake box because I couldn't, actually, I couldn't take out this lower hose. So I went ahead and I took out the hose from the block. Uh, it was a lot easier to apply on. I mean, I could have just pulled this out, but I didn't want to force it because this is plastic and I don't want to really force it and break it. Now, to remove the coolant sensor is very simple. You're just going to turn it all the way clockwise. Like so. And you should come out. This is pretty much the sensor that tells us when the coolant is low and why not. So we're just going to transfer and put it back into the new overflow tank. All right, so pretty much here, I have installed it back the overflow tank. Now, to take this thing out, out of this little bracket over here, it could be a little bit of the challenge. You're just going to stick up your flathead screwdriver right there where the little opening is. 
and you just ply it up, it should pop out. So pretty much what's holding the overflow tank in place is two O-ring that is inside the overflow tanks. So it's one over here and also one over here. Now I highly recommend it just to loop the O-ring with some coolants before you force it in because it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Now to finish the job, we're just going to reverse the process, put everything back in, add some coolant, purchase system and call it for the day. So pretty much here I reversed the process and I put everything back into the car, the fan system, you know, the intake box, I put everything back in, the hoses, everything in the bottom as well is connected, make sure that it's nice and tight. So one thing that I didn't mention is there's a bolt over here that holds the overflow tank. Uh, there is very limited space over here to get in. So pretty much what I did over here is I lift up the radiator a little forward, a little up and uh, you should be able to get access into it. And for last, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add coolant back into the car and also bleed the coolant system. The bleeding process is going out. It's pretty simple, just let the car run about 10 to 15 minutes let the thermostat open so the coolant could recirculate in the whole coolant system and you should be good all right just to finish just make sure that there is no leak anything that's coming out from the bottom make sure that all the hoses are tight and uh you should be good 